Okay, everybody, it's Seattle 206723, and we're going to do a whiskey review of the Cavallon Vino Baderique. Um, it's made in, it's a Taiwanese whiskey, and it was named Whiskey of the Year. As you can see there, Whiskey of the Year, and it's only aged, I think, what? Four years, five years. Whiskey of the year. Wow. Short time period. And they got it done. It's amazing. Okay, of course, we've always got to have an elitist whiskey drinker coaster here. We're going to put that bad boy right there for you. Um, the cork on this. Here, and we're going to do as always we're going to do a nosing we're going to do a tasting and then we'll go over the price points and tell you what it's worth um, I'll also give you some more information about how to how to read what when and where it was bottled and how to come up with that with that timetable of your own now I'm adding a cap of water here because she's at 57.1 percent which is a uh, barrel proof and I want to bring that down to about 49, 48 myself. About 49 is where I like it, personally. A um, little time here to, to spew. Also, we'll give you a look at the legs and stuff on there. I don't if, yeah, it's, she's got some legs there. And I'll give you the ability to take a look at it at the color on it. Some people like uh, the white background. I can give you one of those too if you like. And there we go. Golden topaz color. Okay. Well, I can smell that now. But I'm going to give you a little bit more information about it. Uh, Vino uh, is a fully matured in American oak wine barrels that have been toasted and recharred in a way that brings out the fruity vanilla notes from the whiskey wood. The case, the cask has deliberately been used to mature both red and white wines which eventually will contribute to the background complex fruitiness to the Cavalier Sodalist Vino Baderique. It is complex and multi dimensional backgrounds of pepper, spice, dates, and other fruits such as ripe melons, mangoes, together with kiwi, and a delicate blend of citrus, fruit, burst. It's kind of what they expect you to get when you're trying it out. Now, the U.S. ones do not say soloists on it. They actually uh, don't say anything. And I've tried to make this video four times. This is the fourth. Um... Originally, I started about here, and by the fourth time now, we're here. And I gave a sample out, so I've had five drinks of it personally just to kind of flesh it out. And the extra times of doing the videos helped as well. But I thought I was ready by the, uh, by the third one um, to go ahead and really give you an idea of what it was like and what it was all about. Um, okay, on the nose... Fresh, very, very red fruits. Smell plum. Chocolate. Definitely plum. Deep red fruits, like a cherry. The water helps it out and brings out a little bit more aroma. Without the water, you don't get so much as the plum. You'll get more um, just red fruits layered with that um, with that fantastic smell of, uh, of cocoa, chocolate sweets. Um, with the water, it becomes more of a milk chocolate. You get the, the, the spices as well. Like you're in a herb shop, and that just hit me right in the nose there. Like like I'm like I'm smelling herbs, spices, and then some type of spice shop, you know, with the smooth cocoa, milk chocolate background, 
with plums and fruits. Um, that's exactly what you're experiencing. I'm experiencing when I when I when I know this. Wow. Really good. I mean, I could spend hours going over this bad boy. Definitely, that's what you're getting. Um, I recommend that you, you know, because of the proof, the 57.1, you bring it down a little bit. Because if you get up about that high, it begins to numb some of the uh, taste buds and you don't taste anything after it. But, and those legs on the, uh, on the oiliness of this is just unbelievable. I mean, just creeping down, even with that water. And it takes time for water to blend in. All right. We're going to go ahead and go into number phase two, the palette. Wow. On entry, plum, herbs, spices, mouth coating, explosive fruits of red, dark fruits. As it crosses that mid palette, it starts to work its way to the back. Get that nice cocoa, milk chocolate note with that uh, spice that begins to reassert itself and 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 just just starts the the long finishing process on it. Absolutely stunning. I mean, it it, it really is. Every time I taste it, I think the same thing. It's absolutely stunning that. You know, a dated 12, my cast number says 12072737. The first two numbers is the year. That would be 2012. The next date is the month, July 07. And on the 27th day, so this is July 27, um, 2012. And here we are in 2017 and it's not quite five years old it's just over four years old and they're getting flavors and tastes out of a younger made whiskey because they're using high quality casks they're using very high quality casks they're picky about what they take they're not you know mass producing things to the masses so let's hurry up and get it out um, and their maturation periods in that tropical region is just making things stunning. This was 2015's whiskey of the year. They also have 2016's with the Amarillo, um as well. They're winning whiskey of world whiskey of the year every year, and it's not surprising. I mean, this is a very high end quality single malt. This is as good as it gets in the single malt industry. This this kills a lot of stuff that I've tasted before. Just totally crushes it. One more time, just to make sure we got those notes clearly. Wow. Mm Same thing with the finish after it goes through that milk chocolate note and goes through the uh, to the herbs and the spices and the very nice 
coating of the esophagus. Truly amazing. World Whiskey of the Year? Yeah, it's already won it. So it is the World Whiskey of the Year for that year. Price point. $200 for the 700 milliliter um, ones you can get in Europe. You can get, you know, in Taiwan. In the U.S. we get the big boy 750 milliliters. I spent 260 for this one. Um, is it worth it? Yeah, if you're con if if you're someone out there searching for a George T. Stag, this is better hands down. By this, um, it would be my recommendation. Definitely, I've tasted both. This is better by a long shot. You don't have to spend five, six, seven hundred bucks for it. Um, you can find them for about anywhere between two forty. To about 300 in the U.S. If you shop around, like I say, you can get them for about 240 with the shipping, 20 bucks or whatever. Um, you know, you're up around 280. Um, so I think definitely it's worth it. It was worth it to me. Um, this bottle is going to be enjoyed enjoyed for quite some time. I'm going to buy another one. You know, once this one gets about three quarters of the way finished, um, or even sooner, I'll pop another one in just to put up. So, what do we give it? What's the score wise on it? We've got a higher price point. You've got a whiskey of the year. You've got outstanding flavors. You've got um, fruits, dark fruits, chocolate, herbs, spices, plum, um, melon, um, even the light citrus notes start to come out a little bit. And it's still finishing. Um, what do you score and rate a, uh, a, 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 a whiskey like this? If you're kind of sore and you tasted some of the best, you know you're dealing with the best, you're dealing with one of the best whiskeys that's out there. Um, I'm going to say this is easily above a 90. I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a score. Um, whiskey of the world. I'm going to say this is a 96. Surely one of the best whiskeys I've ever tasted. Without a doubt. I look forward to trying the 2016's whiskey of the year. That will be coming out later. Um, my man uh, Whiskey in the Six did a video on this. You know, as well he gave it an A+. Plus. Um, whiskey Whistle. Um, Mark over there, he's done the sherry, he's done the uh, ex-bourbon. Um, if you're interested in some of the other ones, uh, check out you know my review, check out uh, Whiskey in the Six uh, review on the uh, Vino Buttery. Uh, check out uh, Whiskey uh, Whistle uh, for the sherry and for the ex-bourbon. It's also Liquor Hound, uh, he's done them. Um, there's only 10 videos on this particular one. Um, it's a high-end, top-notch uh, whiskey. Um, it's something that definitely requires, a, you know, an occasion or something to break out. I mean, you have, by the second one of these, you're good. <laughs> the second one, you're good. Trust me, I know I tried to do this video four times. I'm going to run some of that for you. Um, by the second one, you're good. Um, potency, you need that potent taste, you love that high octane feel, it's got it, it's got your, it's got some complexity that's out of this world, and the flavors on it is absolutely distinct and inquisitive and inviting to the palate. You just don't get any better. The Seattle Tool 6723 with the review of one of the world's, the world's best whiskey from Taiwan, four years old and some months, from the elitist whiskey drinkers, we're out.